What's up guys, Tea Party Percy here and welcome back to my new Guardian Raid guide. This time we're going to talk about the last Guardian of the Tier 4 Guardian Raid which is Tiltalis. I know this is not the right name for this boss, but you will see soon why we call this boss Tiltalis. As always, I will give you guys basic info about this boss, then the runes which you need and I will also give you some combat item suggestion depending on the situation and explain all the skills and mechanics you need to know about this boss and how to dodge those. So let's start first with the basic info. The reason why we call this boss Tiltillers is because in my opinion this is one of the most unpredictable guardians and even if you are EVE overgeared this guardian can catch you off guard and chunk down your HP from 100 to 0 in a few seconds. So let's start with the runes. For the green runes you need 60% earth resistance and for the purple the 100% earthquake immunity is mandatory. Now before I explain you which combat items I suggest or you need I should explain you guys the skills or the skill patterns and the mechanics first because you need to know the skills and the patterns so that you understand why you need certain combat items for this guardian raid. So I will start with easy to predict dodge and low damage skills and end the list with the fatal one hit skills. So first in the skill list is the double paw strike. The first hit knocks you back and the second one knocks you down. This skill will deal low amount of damage but the knockdown can be fatal if the boss follows up with a high damage skill. Safe spots are left, right and behind the boss. Second skill is the flame breath attack. This attack deals medium amount of damage but can hit you more than once. Safe spots are left, right and also behind the boss. Third attack is the charge attack. This attack can hit you up to two times and deal high amount of damage. Like the other skills, you should avoid to stay in front of the boss. Next, we have the fire waves. The boss can spawn one of two variants of the fire waves. First one is when waves are moving left and right from the boss parallel to each other. This is the best variant because you can just go behind the boss and deal tons of damage. Second variant makes it hard to stay close to the boss, so you have to position yourself diagonal and a little bit further away from the boss. The next attack on our skill list is spawning sandstorm. Boss will spawn two sandstorms which will give you a debuff if you stay in there. And once you have three stacks of it, you will get petrified. While you are petrified, you won't be able to move but also can't take any damage. You will be petrified for around about 10 seconds and after that, you will get a debuff which will prevent you to get petrified for the next 30 seconds, which is a double-edged sword. This one is one of the most important mechanics to avoid getting one-hitted by the extinction skill, which I will explain later. The sixth skill in the list is spawning the bomb squad. The bomb squad <laughs> is actually a circle on the ground which will be spawned by the boss and it will keep spawning two bombs at the same time in around about 10 second intervals if no one stays on it. Those bombs deal high damage so as soon as the boss spawns it a bard or a range class should try to stay on it and if you are too slow and the bomb spawns Bard or the range class should hit each of those bombs once and lead those away from the group. Once those two bombs explode on that player, or close to the player, not on that player, the player should go back and stay on the circle to stop the bomb from spawning. Careful, the bomb circle can spawn on the sandstone which will make it hard to spot and if you try to stay on it you can get petrified. In some cases it is better to let the bomb spawn and then take them away from the party and let them explode. Next we have the Ring of Doom. This is the most annoying and unpredictable skill and deadly especially for us with a high ping and slow class. The boss will slam three times on the ground. Each slam spawns circles on the ground which deals tons of damage. Circles can overlap and will do more damage if you get hit multiple times in a row. If you get hit, it will also knock you down which makes it even more deadly. 
To avoid this skill, you have to be pretty fast. If you play a slow class and got high ping, then either you pray to RNG Jesus or just make it fast and painless and let it hit you. Joking. Next, we have the Earthquake, which rings the bell of Doomsday. The boss will slam the ground three times and each strike will deal low damage and expand the range of the next strike's AoE. If you don't have Earthquake immunity, you will get Earthquake and won't be able to move for around about 10 seconds. This skill will also enrage the sandstorms on the ground. And those will start to move towards a player with high speed. But the most important thing is that after using Earthquake, the boss will do 2 to 3 skills depending on the duration of the skills and then he will do his fatal skill called Extinction. So remember, if the first two skills after Earthquake are short and fast, he will do Extinction after the third skill. But if the first or the second skill is a long animation skill like the Sand Wave Spawning or the Ring of Doom, then the boss can do Extinction after the second skill. Now, let's talk about the Extinction skill. Once you see the animation of the skill, you have three options. One, you run into the sandstorm and let it petrify you. Second option, if you got petrified earlier and still got the debuff which prevents you from getting petrified, then you can either use your blue debuff remove potion and then let you petrify. Or the last option, if the first two options are not possible, then you have to run away from the boss far enough or climb up a ladder or move onto a rope, slackline down, whatever, so that you can avoid getting one-shotted. You should start running when he uses the first skill after the earthquake, especially if you have a slow movement class. Last skill or actually a phase in the skill list is the enrage phase. So let's say you fucked it up and died to the extinction skill. That's already bad, but the worst thing will follow after that. The boss will enrage as soon as someone dies to the extinction skill. This won't happen if you die to any other skill, so keep that in mind. As soon as boss enrages, he will have a flame aura, which will deal small amount of damage every few seconds around the boss. In this mode, he will also cast all the spells above, which I explained earlier, a lot faster. And even worse, after around about 30 seconds, the boss will cast Extinction again without doing Earthquake before and you won't even have the Sandstorm to petrify yourself. So most of the time, this is a wipe. To prevent it from happening, you have to impair the boss. So you should use impairment skill and down the boss before he recasts Extinction. Once the boss is downed, he will go back to his normal state and won't be enraged anymore. Okay, so that's it for the skills. Now, at the end, let me explain you which battle items you should take. As a beginner, I would suggest you to go with the blue healing potion, the blue combat healing potion to be exact. But if you are pretty confident, then you can also go with the green potions. The next item which you need are the blue scarecrows which you will need in two different situations. The first situation is, if you are a beginner to this raid, you can place the Scarecrow when you encounter this boss for the first time or re-encounter it after it ran away. Try to place it close to the boss, but also at a wall. Once boss is focusing it, everyone should use their buff skills and ultimate to deal as much damage as you can in this short amount of time while the boss is focusing the Scarecrow. The next situation where the Scarecrow is needed and it's even more important is if the boss enraged because someone fucked up during the extinction phase. If this happens, then like option 1, someone should place the Scarecrow close to a wall so that the boss focuses the Scarecrow and you can use all your skills and impairment based skills especially to down the boss as fast as possible and to prevent the next extinction passed without any warning. The third combat item, which is kind of mandatory for most of the raids anyways, is the flare. No need for explanation. Let's move on to the last combat item slot. 
You should already know, I explained it kinda during the sandstorms. This item is the blue CC remove potion. You need the blue one because it should remove the debuff with 100%. If you take the green version of it, there's only 50% chance that you remove the debuff and that could fuck up your entire party if you can't remove the petrified debuff fast enough to get you petrified again during the extinction phase. Okay guys, that's it for this boss. I hope I didn't confuse you too much and I was helpful and hope I made it a little bit easier to kill this boss for you, especially if you are trying this boss for the first time. As always guys, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments or join our Discord which is linked below and ask your questions there. If you have any guide suggestions, write it in the comments. I'll read all of those comments. I appreciate critics and suggestions. And of course guys, as always, thanks for your support. Thanks for watching this video. See you on the next video or on stream or in Discord. Your Tea Party Percy. Bye-bye.